I was born in Salonica on the 28th of September 1923 from a mother born in Istanbul and a father born in Salonica as well. At home, all the people spoke Ladino and younger people spoke French. We left Salonica for some economic reasons. I had an uncle, he went to France and was living in Toulon first and after went to live in Brussels. After that, my grandfather followed and of course, after my grandfather, we followed. On the 10th of May, 1940, the Germans enter Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg. One day, two men from the Jewish community came in our shop and presented me with a long list of things to take to the assembling point for the Jews before deportation to Germany. I went to the office and told my boss. He said, you are not going anywhere. And this man brought an empty identity card, a Belgian card that he had stolen, a, a genuine card. And they told me, how do you want to be called? I was so haunted by the idea of Jews and Christian and Christians that automatically I said Christian de la Croix and nobody laughed. Mr. Peter said René Michels who was a colleague, I didn't know he was in the resistance, will come to pick you up because we took tickets for you for the night train to Paris. We had decided between us that if we were interrogated, we would pretend that we eloped. So suddenly, at one stop, the Gestapo comes on the train and starts checking the papers. They keep the identity card of René, and then they take mine, and they keep it as well. Then he takes my, my hand, and I know how stupid it may sound, but in my fear, I thought he might see I'm Jewish in my hand. He looked at me, and I, I kept that feeling that the guy had recognized me as a Jewess. He gave me back my paper, and to René his, he first asked, Jude? I said, me? No. And that was it. Sometimes tragic moments, when you are living them, you just go ahead and do them, which is wonderful. It's like a miracle that you allow yourself to remain quiet without any effort. I'm not a hero. It just all went smoothly and it continued. It must have been about September or October 1944. Eventually, the liberation came. And they were saying that the goal was going to march on the Champs-Élysées. And of course, nobody wanted to miss that. My cousin, Freddy, and myself went that day, and we were talking to the liberators. They were French and American and Spanish, and laughing and be so happy. And suddenly, we heard some gunshot. It was the collaborators shooting at us. And for a second, I thought, Flo, 
you must be stupid. You went through the whole war and you're going to die here in a minute. And thank God it stopped or they caught them and everything went smooth after that. We saw the goal and we shout and we cried and sang and it was so wonderful. Of course, after that, things were pretty fast. All I could think of is to go to the authorities and get some papers in my real name this time. When my mother saw me, she was not speaking French. She was suddenly speaking Spanish. She, in, in her emotion, she would speak Ladino. Well, I went back to my old job in the office of the people repatriated. I used to watch when I saw Jewish people coming in. One day, a man came in. It was my future husband, Eddie, and we called the people from concentration camp the prisoners. So I asked Eddie, and what are you going to do now? He said, I've got a permit to go to Australia. And he said, would you like to come with me? Very flirt. So I said, why not? Anyway, when they left, I said to the others, what do you think? A prisoner asked me to go with him in Australia. And everyone laughed, of course. The joint, which was the Welfare Society, helped all the people in need. That was mainly people who had been in camp and pay the trip to Australia. The ship was called the Suriento. In Perth, we met the envoy of the Welfare Society to explain a little bit to us how life would be in Australia. He said something which touched me a lot. He said, when you hear a noise in the morning, it'll be the milkman, not the, not the Gestapo. So 